Good morning, it's Brian here at Fitzpatrick's Garage, Dublin Road, Kildare. I want to show you this car here. This is a 2017 Honda HRV, and this particular car is a 1.5, but it's a little bit more seldom because it's an automatic version. We are at Fitzpatrick's Garage, Dublin Road, Kildare, a family run business in operation for almost 70 years. Brian is my name, it's Johnny Information Wanted. This particular car, call, text, WhatsApp, whichever suits, 086 843 1945. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look around the outside of this car. We're going to have a look at the features on the inside and we're going to have a quick drive in the car as well. As we were saying then, this is a 1.5 automatic model. These cars were a little bit seldom. These cars were actually produced, but we only got a certain amount of them into the country since 2016. The reason being, they were actually made in a factory where most of the cars were actually going straight to North America. So Europe got a small proportion and Ireland got a very small proportion of a small proportion. As a result then, that's kind of what I like about them because they're a little bit different. When you drive up and down the road and you see all the Sportages, Qashqai's and things like Tucson's, the HRV is a little bit more seldom. And this one especially as well in automatic. These are a very, very nice package overall. But this one has a little bit of a difference compared to the others. It's got a really cool full leather interior which is not normally on these cars but anyway we'll have a look at that in a little while. Starting off with the outside then the colour of this car is what is called a rouge black. So as you look at the car at a glance you would think that is a grey car until you put it beside a grey car and then you realise it's not. What it it's is. It's quite difficult to see but you would see it in more sunny conditions. It's a really dark grey kind of purple colour. That means then on a day like today where it's overcast, it looks like a very, very dark grey, but on sunny days, you have a lovely purple effect on the paint. This model then is an ES model. So first things that stand out on the front of the car is you have front fog lights. Secondly then is the headlights are automatic. So from the key, we can actually turn on the headlights or actually turn them off. The lights are auto dip. So that means when you meet traffic, they'll actually dip themselves. If you go to an unlit area, they actually go full by themselves as well. The key's also got another function, which means we can let the windows down. Or similarly, we can lock the windows by bringing them up and also retract the wing mirrors. The engine in this car then is that non-turbo, super reliable, 130 horsepower, Earth Dreams IV Tech engine. We've had good experiences with this engine. It's been very, very straightforward, very robust, very, very reliable. Fuel efficiency, somewhere in the region of 40 to 45 miles per gallon, which is about six liters per 100 kilometers. The road tax for the year on this car is 270 euros for an automatic car that is actually quite good. Moving down the side of the car then, other features that stand out straight away are those 17 inch diamond cut wheels. What I mean by diamond cut then is they have that nice shiny reflective surface. So artificial light at nighttime or the sun during the day leaves a lovely reflective finish on them. And then there's black sections in the center to hide all that nasty brake dust that normally builds up. Chrome door handles, as you see then, are standard on the side of the car and the rear door handles are actually hidden. So a lot of people sometimes think these are a three door vehicle. It is that they're recessed, but they give the car just a sleeker, more coupe style look. And then moving down onto the back of the car, you can see there's a roof spoiler and the rear tail lights are a nice LED finish. Because this is an ES model, then you have parking sensors standard on the front of the car as well as the rear. So let's have a look at the inside of the car. In terms of the boot, it's in nice condition. This car is very low mileage. It's one owner from new. It's got 30,000 kilometers, so the boot is in excellent condition. And what's cool about the boot in these cars, they're split levels, which means you can actually open up and actually get a hoover by the looks of it. But there is a center, sorry, there's a section down low, which means you can throw stuff in and then you still have a nice big boot after that. The magic seat function on the rear of these cars then makes it really handy to fold the seats down. And as you can see, they go flat, which means you get a load area, which is very like a car style van. In terms of sitting in the car and how the car drives. Okay, so because an automatic car, we have park, reverse, neutral drive, and then there's a sport mode here. And the gear, sorry, and the steering wheel has two uh, paddles, which I'll show you in a little while. So we'll just go for a quick drive in the car, see how it behaves. In terms of comfort, the steering wheel is rake reach, so I can go in and out and up and down as well. And the seat that I'm in then is obviously height adjustable. I'm gonna go for a quick drive in the car. It's very low on fuel, and oddly enough, we've had a power cut this morning, which means actually the fuel pumps next door have all stopped working so I'm just paranoid that we're going to run out of fuel but anyway let's see what it's like the car has about 30,000 kilometers one owner from you it's got a service history of a Honda garage it drives grand it drives perfect actually so from the point of view of how the steering feels how the brakes feel the cabin is nice and quiet gears feel fine well CVT gearbox everything is quite nice so in terms of condition and how the car drives and stuff I'll be quite happy that if you come to look at the car you'll be satisfied with condition overall just to play a bit of a dangerous game, even though we are low on fuel, anyone that's curious about uh, acceleration on these cars, the CVT gearboxes, you floor the car from zero, so we're 20, 40, 60, 80, and then we're up to 100 kilometers an hour. The acceleration on a CVT gearbox, as you see, is quite good, but the way they work is it gives you maximum engine revolutions. That's not normal driving, I've not been hard in the car, but I just want to show you what it's like to get up through the gears. Realistically speaking, what you're normally going to do is just cruise along 
And that's the beauty of a CVT then, when you're cruising along, these engines become very, very efficient. So this is more normal kind of uh, acceleration, so we're going 40, 50 kilometers an hour. The engine revolutions are at about two and a half. They don't go up through gears, it just gives you the exact amount you need. So what you saw when I needed power, I was getting full amount, but now that I'm cruising, we're now gone back down into, actually D mode here, because you're sitting at 1100 RPM. The car is doing its best to re reduce the amount of fuel that it's using. And that's the whole idea of a CVT gearbox. It's giving you the exact revolutions. High power is gonna make a bit of noise, but most of the time, 90% of the time, you're gonna be cruising around, very low RPMs, low fuel, nice and quiet. So I got lucky accelerating while the car was low on fuel. We didn't run out of fuel, which is good. Anyway, what we're gonna do is have a look around the inside of the car at all the other features that are on the car in terms of safety and just general equipment for in-car uh, comfort. Moving into the inside of the car then, as we were saying earlier, it's got a really nice bespoke interior. So as you can see, it's full beige leather. We saw already that the seats have a magic kind of function, but what's also cool as well is you can recline them, which lets them back a little bit further than a normal seat. And in terms of legroom, in the back of a HRV, there's a serious amount. So headroom overall, if you're sitting inside the car, this is the headroom I'd have when I'm six foot, but the legroom is really good on these. So in front of me, if I'm sitting behind myself, I've that much legroom. There's a lot of leg room in the back of these. And they're based on the Jazz, which should be a small car, but it's not. So they're really, really comfortable in the back. Up over my head then, I've got two LED lights to light up uh, the rear of the cabin at nighttime. And the interior of that car is so nice. Beige leather, always lovely, always a nice, bright place to be. Rear doors in here will have child locks on the rear. There will be a nice chrome surround around the speaker in through there, and electrics for windows in through here. And as you can see then, the leather contrasts nicely with the black interior on the car. However, the roof lining is still a light colour which complements the beige interior. Roof, uh, sorry, uh, kangaroo rear pockets are standard on the rear of the seats. Drinks holders down here and we have 12 volt power into the back of the car as well. The seats also have the magic function which means we can literally just lift them up on both sides and you end up with a tall mode for anything awkward you want to transport. Moving into the inside of the car then we have electrics for windows and mirrors over through here. Down onto this side here then we got parking sensors front and rear. We have lane change warning which basically there's a couple of dynamic safety features on the car. One of them warns you if you drift out of your lane. The second one actually tells you the exact speed sign that you're going through. So if it sees a 60, 80, 100 km an hour sign it actually shows you on the screen. And the third thing then, collision mitigation. So when there's something that stops in front of you, if you haven't applied the brakes on time it's going to apply the brakes to stop you from hitting the vehicle in front safety in the car then all those doors will have side impact protection beams you will have anti-lock brakes you'll have emergency brake assist emergency brake distribution they're all things that are designed basically to allow you to have full braking pressure but still actually control horizontal movement of the car as you expect after that then i've got a driver's airbag which is two stage i've got a uh, passenger airbag i've got a curtain up here and i've got side in the side of the seats as well Sitting in the car then, this is the view that I'm going to have in front of me. So when I look down my clocks, I get these nice, big, bright white clocks. Revolution counter, speedo, and trip information in through here. The steering wheel then houses cruise control with a speed limit. It's pretty cool in this car because you can set it to limit your speed. You can also set it to respect uh, road signs. So when it sees a 60, 80, 100 km hour zone, it's going to slow you down to get you to that speed. On the left-hand side of the steering wheel then, usual stuff like controls for radio. And down along here, we have Bluetooth controls in through trip here. Trip information we were talking about gives information like average speed, fuel efficiency, next service due in the car and in through here is where the speed signs come up that we were talking about. We talked about earlier having fully automated headlights and then in through here we also have wipers which are fully automated and there's paddles on the steering wheel to go up and down through simulated gears. If you want to get more involved in the driving, you can by simulating gears by using them, but most people in an automatic car, that's the whole idea you bought it, is to cruise. As we talked about already, the car has parking sensors on the front which make noise and parking sensors on the rear and it's gonna warn you in through here and it's also gonna tell you over here where exactly the problem is. The Honda Connect system over here then is touch and swipe, so you've got things like your mobile phone, you've got trip information, usual audio, audio, audio functions basically working off two USBs, and there's also HDMI if you want to play video, and also you can stream from Spotify, stream from Bluetooth, um, so in terms of music, uh, it's quite easy to use. Moving down in through the centre, and actually before we skip past that, there is also loads of other things in here like an internet browser, calendar and clock. Heating controls are dual zone, so my passenger and driver have different temperatures, and in through here then was the gear stick setup we were talking about earlier. Drinks holders in through here, which can be made slightly shallower by adjusting these, and then in through here there's an armrest which moves back and forward with some storage. So there you have it, that is our 2017 1.5 ES model Honda HRV. Information on the car, Brian's my name, 086-843-1945. Hopefully the car's of interest. If you want information about trading in, in terms of finance, or just information on the car in general, give me a shout anytime you like. And hopefully the video's been useful. Thanks for taking time to watch.